All right, so let's get into this video. This video is titled The Pitcher Who Can't Stop Fighting People. I love it. Joe Kelly has had one of the most fiery careers of any player in Major League Baseball history. Throughout his career, he has gone from being one of the worst starters in MLB to one of the most dominant relief pitchers in baseball, while being one of the biggest fan favorites on two of the biggest franchises in MLB history. He's gotten into multiple fights defending his teammates and even wrote a book about his career up to this point. Joe Kelly has had one of the most eventful careers of all time, even if he might not be a household name due to his talent level. Let's take a look into the story of the pitcher who wants to fight everyone, which began on June 9th, 1988, when he was born in Anaheim, California. Kelly was a two-way player in high school. He posted an impressive 371 batting average his senior year, which is part of the reason why he was accepted into UC Riverside in his home state of California. In his 19-year-old freshman season, he was a reliever and a dominant one at that. He had a 1.33 ERA in Look at this. <laughs> he got a 947 ERA. Then the year after with a 574 ERA, he gets drafted. If that doesn't prove so like freshman year dominant, most innings pitched, 133 ERA, really good, obviously. I, how do you get drafted with those two other years? I guess the they were very impressed with the first two. Well, he doesn't walk anybody. He had six he was just getting hit around a little bit, I guess. Our UC Riverside, and he threw to a 9.47 ERA with 10 walks. That's just absurd. How do you how do you get there? How do you get to that point? But oh well, let's keep going. And 22 games and allowed one home run in 27 plus innings. However, in his next two seasons, he was pretty horrible, especially his sophomore season where he posted an ERA higher than nine. Then in his next season, he had a five plus ERA. Somehow this was enough to get him drafted within the top 100 of the 2009 draft, where he went 98th overall in the third round to the St. Louis Cardinals. That is not third round material, but he is a, he is crazy stuff. Like stuff sells. Stuff always sells. So if you're a pitcher and you don't necessarily have the stats yet, like I know countless people that played professional baseball that didn't put up crazy numbers in college and I know crazy numbers in college type guys that didn't play professional baseball. So there's like a good college player and then there's a guy that's going to end up being a good professional player. And that's what the scouts really decipher from. The website minorleaguebaseball.com said Kelly was the 10th best prospect in the Cardinals system. They wrote that Kelly had nasty power sinking stuff. The results didn't match the arm. This could slash should change in Pro Bowl, but he was erratic in the NYP too, so maybe it won't. Currently, Kelly is a fireball reliever with one of the fastest sinkers in baseball, so this checks out with how his career ended up going. With that being said, Kelly was better than he was in his college seasons, posting a 4.6 ERA in 2010 before posting a 3.6 ERA in 2011, where he jumped to the 8th best prospect in the Cardinals farm system. And after a phenomenal start to his 2012 campaign where he had a 2.86 ERA in 12 AAA games, Kelly had been called up and was set to make his MLB debut on June 10th, 2012, one day after his 24th birthday. In his debut, he started and gave up 7 hits and 5 innings although he escaped with only allowing one run. At the end of the year, Kelly had a 3.53 ERA and 16 starts and 8 relief appearances. This worked out well enough to get him 7 appearances in the playoffs. Joe Kelly was great in the NLDS, where he gave up no hits in over 3 innings, but in the NLCS, he was less good, giving up 2 runs and 6 hits in just 4 innings while walking 3 batters as well. A solid rookie season for the 24-year-old starter. However, the strikeouts were still an issue. There just wasn't enough of them because the off-speed stuff wasn't good enough. And although he had a powerful fastball, it wasn't quite the 101 mile per hour heat-seeking missile that it is today. He also had an incredibly bad walk rate, which made his whip or walks and hits per innings pitched and FIP or fielding independent pitching. This just means that he gives up too many homers, walks too many, and doesn't strike out enough batters. We're both bad. However, he could potentially build off this 
nice rookie season, and that is exactly what he did, lowering his ERA by an entire run, where he had 10 wins as well. He was 40% better than the average MLB pitcher, which was impressive. However, his FIP actually went up, which means he got slightly lucky, considering his walk rate went up and the strikeout rate went down. Both of these trends were concerning for the young starter. After only getting relief appearances in his rookie playoff series, in 2013 he got his first four postseason starts, including a World Series start against the Boston Red Sox, where he went... It's so interesting to me to watch the way his body changed as he got into, like, a reliever role. Like, he doesn't move anything like this anymore. He used to be very, like, long, loose, arms flowing all over the place, and now it's, like, just a totally different pitcher. He's just so much more rigid, tight mover, explodes late. And this, it's, like, long, loose. It's very interesting. And in this video, I mean, he's throwing, like, 93. And then now, in, as a reliever, he's throwing way harder than that. 5.1 innings and allowed just two runs. The Cardinals would end up losing that series to the Boston Strong Boston Red Sox, of course, because David Ortiz doesn't lose playoff series. However, this postseason run would be the start of when Joe Kelly became a known person in the MLB community, and even started the first of many of his career dramas. Joe Kelly started Game 1 of the 2013 NLCS against the Los Angeles Dodgers, and it took just until the first inning for him to start some fire fireworks in St. Louis. Kelly drilled Dodger shortstop Hanley Ramirez with a 95 mile per hour fastball, and Hanley Ramirez broke one of his ribs. Ramirez continued playing in the series, however he struggled badly, getting just two hits in the five games he played in, and this was after he had an insane NLDS where he batted 500 with six extra base hits in just four games. Dodger fans had a lot of thoughts about this hit by pitch. Hanley was the hottest hitter in baseball when this happened, cost us the series without a doubt, and we probably would have won the World Series too. Dirty play. You can tell it was on purpose by how quickly Molina walked out to protect Kelly from Hanley charging the mound. I don't know why anyone is surprised. St. Louis is one of the dirtiest teams in baseball. Dodger fans were rightfully upset with Kelly injuring one of the best players on the roster, but personally, I think this was a mistake pitch. It was on a one ball, two strike count with a runner already on first base. You aren't trying to put a runner in scoring position when you have a batter on a two strike count, in my opinion. The Yadier Molina situation with him quickly jumping in front of Hanley is a little weird to be fair, but I think he was just going to check on him and not stop him from getting to his pitcher. With that being said, the Dodgers must not have thought too much about it at the time, because before Game 6, Joe Kelly and Scott Van Slyke, a Dodgers outfielder, had a standoff. For those of you that don't know what that is, it's a bit of a lost art in baseball, where two players would stand in front of their dugouts after the National Anthem without moving for as long as- Funny story about that. We used to do that before every game in college, and every time we every time we won that battle, we ended up losing the game. Not that we won a lot of games, but we we were adamant on we had to win something. So we would try to win that, and then I don't remember a single time we won that battle and then went on to win the game. Just putting that out there. Baseball is uh, very... Um, sacrilegious in that way. Possible. It's kind of like a game of chicken. Whoever would go back to the dugout first would lose, because normally the umpire would start to get mad at the players. Kelly lost this standoff, sadly for him, although I have no doubts if he did this today, he'd literally stand there for three weeks if that's what it took to win, but while the Dodgers might have celebrated the standoff, that would be the last thing that they celebrated this season, with Kelly's Cardinals winning later that night, knocking the Los Angeles Dodgers out of the playoff race, partially due to Kelly, not only with his solid pitching, but also his lack of control. After a disappointing start to his 2014 season, where the walk rate had increased even more, Joe Kelly was shipped off to the Boston Red Sox for John Lackey, who struggled in 2014. However, in This is my favorite Joe Kelly. Red Sox Joe Kelly was different. He threw 104 and just beefed everyone. It was amazing. I hope he gets into that fight. I'm a Yankee fan, and I loved what he did in, the, in that fight with Tyler Austin. 
2015, he was ninth in Cy Young voting as he put together debatably the best season of his career. Similarly, Joe Kelly also struggled in his first stretch of Boston baseball, with the walk rate increasing even higher once again. In 2015, Kelly was moved to the bullpen full-time after having his worst career ERA in 2015 through 25 starts, and by 2016, he was a full-time reliever. But once again, with an ERA over 5, Kelly couldn't replicate his second-year success in Boston. However, he did make two major changes in 2016. He increased his four-seam fastball usage by 10%, and he also increased the pitch's velocity from 96 to 97 miles per hour on average. He was throwing his best pitch harder than ever before, and now was throwing it more often than ever before. But will that change anything? Joe Kelly in 2017 put it all together and posted a career-low 2.7 ERA and a career-high 54 plate appearances and his fastball jumped another 2 miles per hour, averaging 99 miles per hour on the four-seamer, and he turned his regular curveball into a knuckle curve, which also became a more effective pitch for the right-hander. Kelly also finally started to gain more strikeouts with these changes, and was finally above league average and K-rate for the first time in his career. Kelly quickly became one of the most reliable players out of the Sox pen within just one season, but the next year would be the year where he became a Red Sox legend. April 11th, 2018, the New York Yankees were facing the Red Sox at home. Both of these teams looked like they were going to be great, and this was a heated series in early April. Tyler Austin slid hard into Brock Holt at second base and put the spikes up, which definitely did cleat Holt. Holt and Austin started jawing at one another, and you could tell this was not going to end there. Later in the game, Joe Kelly was on the hill, and Tyler Austin stepped into the box, and then fireworks. Joe Kelly had just slammed Tyler Austin in the ribs with a 99 mile per hour. I wonder what happened to that guy, Tyler Austin. I haven't heard anything about him. I don't know if he's playing baseball still, retired, you name it fastball and set off the first real Red Sox Yankees fight in over a decade. It also helps that he kind of won the fight. And just like that, t-shirts were being made, papers were being written. It was Joe Kelly's city for a few days. Joe Kelly was the king of Boston. His play unfortunately wasn't as impressive, however, posting a 4 plus ERA. However, this Boston Red Sox team finished with the best record in franchise history and Joe Kelly appeared in 73 games. Almost half of the game played in the season by Boston. The slightly worse season was quickly forgotten about, however, as the Red Sox went on to win the World Series, and Joe Kelly was electric in the postseason. Highlighted by a World Series where he appeared in all five games, threw six innings, struck out half the batters he faced, allowed just four hits and zero runs, and most importantly, walked no one. Joe Kelly was officially a fan favorite. However, this was the last time he'd pitched in a Boston Red Sox uniform, as that offseason, he would join the Los Angeles Dodgers, and his story just gets even crazier from there. 2019 was a bit of a throwaway season for Kelly, just as an average season with a terrible postseason where the Dodgers got bounced early. But luckily, the 2020 offseason would be the catalyst that would send Joe Kelly into another Fight Club moment. For those of you that don't know, which is no one currently watching this video, the Houston Astros cheated for their franchise's first World Series in 2017. This was found out by Ken Rosenthal and John Boy media mainly, with the help from a former Astros starting pitcher, Mike Fires, who told Rosenthal that the Astros were stealing signs in 2017. This wasn't found out until two years later. Either way, the Astros had stolen a World Series from the Dodgers, and of course, Joe Kelly is now a Dodger, and he likes causing issues. Players on the Dodgers, mainly Clayton Kershaw and Cody Bellinger, both made their stances very well known about how they felt about having their championship robbed. We all know how Joe Kelly handled the last situation where a teammate was affected by someone else's actions, let's see what Kelly does about this one. On July 28th, 2020, just five games into the Dodgers' shortened 60-game season, Joe Kelly faced off against the Houston Astros. Joe Kelly's Red Sox had also been beaten in 2017 by the cheating Houston Astros as well, so he was mad for his Red Sox and Dodger teammates, and because of that, when he entered into a 5-2 ball game, Kelly took matters into his own hands. Joe Kelly, being the mad 
madman that he is, just threw at multiple Astros players and gave them one of the most iconic faces in MLB history, the pouty face. Sometimes I complain a little too much. If I get a cold, if I have a headache, I'm very vocal. I don't take it as if I'm dying, but I just say that very loud. Kelly said on an appearance on the Big Swing podcast, she'll give me a boo-hoo face like, oh, you're so sick, you need help, want me to make you some soup, it's so tough to be you. When Carlos is chirping back at me, the boo-hoo face felt right, just because it sounded like he was complaining, so I was like, ah, boo-hoo. For me, it sounded like a bunch of whining. So now I know exactly what my wife feels like, so I'm going to stop whining because I didn't like the whining, and now I know she doesn't like the whining. Once again, Kelly had turned himself into a legend. Joe Kelly was the king of another city, even getting a mural inside of a barber shop in LA. Of course, with the iconic pouty face. MLB, however, wasn't as happy with Kelly as they suspended him for eight games, which was later reduced to five after an appeal from the reliever. Kelly and his Dodgers would go on to win the World Series in 2020, giving him a second ring with two organizations and being a key contributor to both of those seasons as Kelly had his best Dodger season in 2020, even if the usage wasn't high. In that season, Kelly also traded his jersey for a mariachi jacket, which he then wore to the White House after being invited to celebrate their World Series victory. Kelly was also a major recruiter for Shohei Otani joining the Los Angeles Dodgers, and even gave up his number to the superstar as they were both the number 17. Otani thanked him by gifting his wife a Porsche. Joe Kelly is well and truly a wild card, both on the field and personality-wise. However, this made him an iconic player and beloved by two of the biggest organizations in MLB history. And in my opinion, that's an extremely successful Major League Baseball career. Put it this way. I've been making videos on social media for the last, like, two years, okay? I've talked about plenty of different players, just made random edit videos, just working on my skills as an editor in general. I do videos on myself. I do videos of Major League players. Nobody gets more views than Joe Kelly. I've done Otani. I've done all the big names. Joe Kelly gets the most views. The only one that's close is Trevor Bauer. It makes no sense to me. But although the fact that he isn't a major leaguer, like, although he isn't like a perennial all-star major league caliber closer, anything like that, he's just a middle relief guy, and he gets that many views, he's doing something right. And a lot of people respect what he does, and they think he's hilarious, and I think he's hilarious, and I think he's good for the game. And we'll leave it at that.